To celebrate the release of Eric Clapton's new album, I Still Do, I really want this to do a complete vinyl collection for you guys. But as over here in the UK, the vinyl has been delayed. I can't do that. So I'm going to show you my complete CD collection. So hello and yes, welcome back to another video guys, and today as I say I'm doing my complete Eric Clapton CD collection, and, and I know a lot of you are probably thinking, CDs, whatever, who cares, um, but I'd actually like to say I've got a very interesting Eric Clapton CD collection, because you guys know me, I Eric is my hero, he's my favourite musician, I love the guy to bits, and um, really wanted to celebrate the release of his new album, I still do, so I just uploaded an unboxing of that. And now I'm going to be going over all of my CDs by him. So, yeah, pretty cool. I wanted to do the vi a vinyl collection, um, but unfortunately um, the vinyl's been delayed here in the UK by a week. So I'm going to have to wait on that one, but that video is coming. But there is already a video out there of me talking about my Eric Clapton vinyl collection over on my really good friend James Larpham's channel, where we've done a video together on Eric Clapton. And go check it out, it's a good time. Um, but anyway... As I say, CD collection of Eric. Um, don't know if there's one of these on YouTube, an Eric Clapton CD collection, so maybe this is the first, but I don't know, but I'm really excited to do it. Maisie's here, my dog. She just looks like a giant black rug at the minute, but she's here joining me because she's a big Eric fan as well, aren't you? Yeah? She nodded. Um, but anyway, so we're going to go right to the start, right to the very beginning of Eric's career, um, when he joined a band called... Yardbirds, and this is just a little <coughs> compilation of some of their uh, better stuff, really. Um, a lot of instrumental stuff on here, but it's still a good time. And then, of course, Eric left the Yardbirds um, to join John Mayle and the Blues Breakers, uh, which also had John McVie in, which is pretty cool. And this is a really good album, actually, and a really nice CD, actually, because you get the Mono Master and the stereo version, as you see on the back there. So that's really cool. Now it's a really good album. And then Eric was kind of cheating on John Mayer at the time here by um, hanging out with some other, um, you know, kind of guitarists and drummers and stuff, and um, eventually left John Mayer, um to start up this band called Fresh Cream with Ginger Baker and Jack Bruce, which is a really interesting story, because, um, you know, Ginger Baker and Jack Bruce didn't get along very well, and um, Eric was kind of swung in the middle of them, and they would consistently argue throughout sessions um, for Fresh Cream and Disraeli Gears, and Eric would kind of just be in the middle. Then they made what is one of the best um, 60s psychedelic rock albums ever, um, Disraeli Gears, of course, uh, which has so many good tracks on Strange Brew, Sunshine of Your Love, uh, Blue Conditioner, um, Take It Back, really, really solid album, this, really good, um, so yeah, um, did I say Blue Condition, or did I say Blue Conditioner, <laughs> I'm just thinking, I think I might have said that wrong, <laughs> but anyway, I love these um, cream ones, because they all have really nice designs inside, so really cool, <clears throat> and then at this point, Eric felt that the band was getting too big, and they were losing their roots, so Eric did opt out, but he did agree to make two more albums. So um, Wheels of Fire was then released, which is the only Double Cream album. And really it isn't a Double Cream album, just the second vinyl was just some live recordings. So it's just some little bonus stuff that they chucked in. But um, yeah, the second CD just on that side. So really cool there. And then of course their last one. Brilliant album to go out with, Goodbye. Uh, really good. This has a um, politician and badge on, which I really like. Really good songs. So, and this is my least favourite of the CDs, to be honest, because it's pretty boring design compared to the others. But, <clears throat> ah, well, you know, they've done a nice job with them cream CDs. And then here, of course, I do have all the way from 2006. Um, is it six or seven? Can't. Yep, it is. No, five. 2005. I was close. Um, uh, cream live at the Royal Albert Hall their reunion concert which is a really good concert and I'm really surprised they could get Ginger Baker back in the country for it to be honest but um, really good, really good um, great to see Jack Bruce there as well you know, rest in peace to him um, 
really, really awesome. And Eric, of course, is amazing here. You know, his guitar playing only got better, I think. Um, and, you know, just fantastic. But then, anyway, after Cream, Eric took a bit of time to find himself. Um, he went off and bought a house and whatnot, kind of settled down a bit. And then, uh, yeah, basically just invited um, Steve Winwood round, where they would jam in his house. And then eventually Ginger Baker caught on, and Ginger Baker come in. And then Rick Greach kind of tagged along as well. And they ended up forming this band and making this one album together, Blind Faith. Which, even though the cover, as you can see, is pretty horrific, um, of a 14-year-old girl standing there naked with a model plane, which I think Rick Greach made or something like that, the music on here is phenomenal. I do adore the music on here. It is a great album. Brilliant 60s one. And then, of course, Blind Faith. You know, Eric didn't want to create Cream again. Um, you know, Eric just liked making good music, which is why he was so good. He wanted to... Eric didn't like bands like, you know, the Beatles or anything because, I mean, he liked them. He got on with them when he saw them and whatnot. I mean, he played on Wild My Guitar, Gently Weeps. But he didn't like them because they were kind of, uh, you know, putting the, the, the style of blues and jazz as a thing of the past. And that's all Eric wanted to do is kind of remind people of that music, make some good kind of rock blues albums. And, um, you know, Cream were getting really commercial, and that's not what Eric wanted. So, and again, he could see that the same thing was going to happen with Blind Faith. So before he let it happen, he opted out. And then he made this album here, Derek and the Dominoes' Layla, which really is Eric's first solo album, as a lot of people, a lot of people consider it. Even the record labels are listed it as an Eric Clapton remastered. Um, but this is an incredible album. I have reviewed it, so if you want to check that out, see me go into detail on it, go check it out. Um, but this is a phenomenal, phenomenal album. Incredible. There's not a bad track on here. I can't even list the good ones because I'd be reading out all of the songs. But just a fantastic, fantastic album. And, yeah, as you can see, this is the first of one of the Eric remasters which I have, which are all kind of done the same. You get a picture of a guitar... And then a list of some of the other albums you can get in this series. So yeah, really cool. Um, so now this is officially the first um, solo Eric Clapton album, which is self-titled here. Which came out the same year as Derek and the Dominoes. And um, Derek and the Dominoes is a, is a better album, obviously. This one here is a lot more slow, bluesy, instrumental kind of stuff. But still a fantastic record, a brilliant debut release. Just incredible. So, yeah. And I didn't even realise that my one had a crack in it. But, oh well, bugger. Um, anyway, where am I going? Where am I going? Okay, so the next one up. Um, this one isn't of the, um, the remastered release, unfortunately. But this is 461 Ocean Boulevard. Which was really his big solo album. This is the one which everyone fell in love with. And, you know, why not? I mean, it had his, it had Willie and the Hand Jive on. Um, it had his cover of I Shot the Sheriff, um, I Can't Hold Out, um, Steady Rolling Man, and Give Me Strength, you know. And, you know, I'm, I'm, and Get Ready. Yeah, I knew there was one which I missed that I liked. Um, so, yeah, fantastic album. Absolutely brilliant. And then we move into an album which I'm not as keen on. And um, it's, I really don't think Eric has any bad albums. So I still do like this album, but it's its definitely one of his weakest albums. It's his very, at this point in Eric's uh, career, he was getting very um, influenced by religion. And we've got this album here called No Reason to Cry. And, you know, you can, I mean, the opening track is We've Been Told Jesus is Coming Soon. And then you've got Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. Um, you know, it's like, I'm not a fan of religious albums myself, because they get too cheesy, and they just get a bit over the top for me. Um, but this isn't a bad album, there's still some good tracks on it. I do like his cover of um, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, that's a good song. But yeah, definitely not his best, but still a good album, worth checking out still. And then we get to the free epic trilogy album by Eric. He had these three albums in a row which all had this amazing slow bluesy feel which were incredible. So the first one up is No Reason to Cry which is really good. 
which he actually does a song with Bob Dylan on, but dare I say it, it's not a great song, that one. However, that's like the only song on the album I actually don't like. Um, but the opening track, Beautiful Thing, is incredible. And then the second track, Carnival, is great. Um, and the last track, Last Night, is really good. So, uh, a great album. Really, really is a fantastic album. Oops, let me get it open. There we go. Do I do love this album. A really underrated one there. And then here we've got Slow Hand, which is incredible. You guys all know about this one. I don't know what I can say about this one. It's fantastic. And then here we've got um, the last one to that kind of free trilogy, slow bluesy feel um, with Backless, which is really cool because, again, love every track on here, really. It has Walk Out in the Rain, Watch Out for Lucy, and Promises, and Tulsa Time, Tulsa Time. Four fantastic tracks right there, which, actually, for my car, I just got a car. Um, I made some little CDs of compilations of my favourite artists, and all four of them tracks which I listed all made my Eric CD. So I really do love that album. And anyway, um, I think we're a little bit out of sync here. I think, um, oh no, no, I am going in the right order. The next release up was a live one called Just One Night. Really cool there. It's one of these horrible double pack things. I do think this is in the remastered series, but for some reason I didn't get the remastered one. <clears> then <throat> here we've got another ticket. Um, moving into 81, and I love the first two 80s Eric albums, they're my favourite of his 80s stuff, not including Journeyman, because Journeyman is incredible, but this one and the next one, Money and Cigarettes, are my favourite of the 80s stuff, because he still has that kind of 70s slow bluesy sound, um, he hasn't gone into that whole 80s sound, um, but yeah, my CD is completely cracked here, it's just absolutely destroyed, but um, not the CD, I mean the, the hole punch in the middle, so, but yeah, Really fantastic record, has Can't Stand It On. Incredible song. And then here, of course, we have Money and Cigarettes, which is a great album. You've got Everybody Ought to Make a Change, um, Man Overboard, um, I've Got a Rock and Roll Heart, Man in Love, and Crazy Country Hop. What a song, I love that one. Um, so, yeah, I mean, people, you know... The one thing which I love about Eric is he didn't let the 80s completely influence him. Those two albums still sounded very bluesy, which I was pleased about, because that's the sound from Eric which I like the most. And here we've got a compilation called Backtracking, which is another shitty double thing which I don't like. And then here we get the first Eric 80s album. But this is a good one, I like it. It's not completely 80s, you still get some bluesy moments on there, some real nice guitar moments. But this is my favourite of the two heavily 80s albums. Um, I really like this one, um, Behind the Sun. It's got um, She's Waiting, um, See What Love Can Do, Knock On Wood, Something Happened, Forever Man, what a song. Tangled In Love, incredible. And the actual track Behind the Sun, really good. So really, really good album there. And then we get August, which I do really like. I do think this is a good album. It's got It's In The Way You Use It, which is fantastic, and Behind The Mask, which is one of his best in the 80s. Uh, you got Run, Bad Influence, Hold On, Miss You. So, it's a good album, it is, but it's definitely the weakest one. It's This is his really 80s album. This is where he got really 80s influence. I mean, this one was produced by Phil Collins, as was um, Behind The Mask, uh, Behind The Sun, even. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure it's Phil Collins. Uh, yeah. So, um, but that one there had some better songs on, I felt. This one here felt really 280s for Eric. Um, but that's the only one. Luckily, he pulls it back a bit after this. But anyway, carrying on, the next one is another compilation called Early Clapsum. And then here it is, Journeyman. Incredible album. Um, kind of coming out of the 80s sound here, going back to a bit of more heavy blues, actually, where he was doing soft blues before the 80s period, now he's kind of doing a bit more heavy blues at times on this album, um, but yeah, he does a nice little jazz number on here called Hard Times, which is really good, there's a song with George Harrison called Run So Far, uh, which George Harrison actually went on to cover on his album Brainwash, but I do prefer this version, um, Pretending, amazing song, Anything For Love, great, Bad Love, great, uh, does a cover of Elvis Presley's Hound Dog, which I know not many people can agree with, but I do actually prefer. Old Love, great. Breaking Point, great. And Before You Accuse Me is great as well. So, 
Solid album. Fantastic. And then, of course, he had the really unfortunate death of his son. Um, I can't think of his name. Oh, God, I can't think of his name. What was it? Hmm. <laughs> I think it was Sean or something like that. Anyway, um, his son, who, of course, fell out of a balcony window from, like, a 30-story building and died. And it's a really sad story because... Eric had never been really connected with his son too much. Um, the day before the accident, he took him to the park um, with his um, the mother of the child, who was a Spanish model, I believe. And, you know, they, everything was all happy. Eric was feeling for the first time like he was being a good father to his son. Next day, he's like, I'm going to take him to the, the zoo, or the circus zoo. There's one just downtown. And, they, were, you know, it was all, it was all planned. Eric was going to go take his kid there. Have a great time anyway. Turns up the next morning and there's police everywhere. And, you know, such a tragic tragic event. You know, it was really sad. Um, but anyway, we got a great song out of it, I guess, is the way to look at it. We got the song Tears in Heaven, which is a fantastic song. It's a shame that the, the song so great had to come from something so horrible. But um, And he'd done this soundtrack for the Motion Picture Rush, which has Tears in Heaven on. And another really good song called Help Me Up. And if you're a big Eric fan and you have not heard this album, because the vinyl is so hard to get, I don't think many people bother with the CD because it's all instrumental and there's only two Eric songs on here. But the instrumentals are great. Fantastic guitar work, lead guitar work. If you want to hear Eric doing some of his best guitar work, go to this one. But anyway, Help Me Up is an incredible song. And then, of course, he hit the big time with Unplugged, one of the best albums ever. It is fantastic. Just a fantastic album. Really deserves everything it got. And then here we got another live album called 24 Nights. Another box thing. But this is pretty cool because Eric doesn't do his 80s stuff or journeyman stuff too often anymore. Apart from pretending or uh, before you accuse me. But um, you get a lot more songs from there. A lot more obscure 80s tracks here which you won't get anywhere else. And then of course he done this album here. Um, from the Cradle, which is a phenomenal album. Love it. Hate the cover. Hate the cover, but I love this album. Got Hoochie Coochie Man on, which is really cool. Really awesome album there. And the good thing is, from from the Cradle onwards, all of these CDs are super cheap. So if you want to get any of these, they're like 99p and under <laughs> on third-party Amazon. So be sure to get a couple of these, because they're great albums. Um... And then we got the compilation, The Cream of Clarkson. Yeah. Yeah. She's paying attention now. She's like, that's the hits one. I like that. <laughs> um, the next one up, fantastic album, Pilgrim. What an album. My Father's Eyes, River of Tears. Um, Pilgrim itself is a great track. Circus, fantastic. Fall Like Rain. This is just a great album. Oh. <laughs> See that? Go on up out quick um slide that back in so yeah fantastic album there really is and then here we've got a compilation called secretly the blues which i got because it has a lot of his stuff which he done with the all-stars band in the 60s which he really kind of just dipped his toes in he didn't do much with them but it's nice to own them and then this compilation is so cheap, so if you're going to get anything from this video, please buy this. It's only like a penny on Amazon, third party, uh, with the pound postage, but check it out because it has two new songs on which you can't get anywhere else. Blue Eyes Blue and I Get Lost, which are fantastic. Then you've got songs like Change the World, Tears in Heaven, um, Forever Man, um, River of Tears, She's Waiting, and then you've got a couple from The Unplugged, um, Layla and uh, running on faith so check this out it's so good an amazing compilation there then we got his album with the late great bb king rest in peace bb king you were amazing and this is a great album fantastic um riding with the king the title track is incredible um i want to be i love that track marry you fantastic um key to the highway brilliant which eric actually did on Derek from the domino so it's nice to see him revisiting it with uh, Mr. BB King, but fantastic album there, love it. And then here's one which I recommend to all my viewers because it's really got a bit of a classic rock sound. This album, um, Reptile. 
So I'd say to anyone who wants to get to know later Eric, check out the song either um, I Ain't Gonna Stand For It, which is originally a Stevie Wonder song, or Superman Inside. That is a great song. So I really do love this album. Great one there. Next one up is another live album here. One More Night... Uh, no, One More Car, One More Rider. Really, really awesome double album here. Needs to be released on vinyl, this one, actually. This is one of the only Eric albums which isn't on vinyl. So we need to get it. Um, but yeah, great live album, all the less. Really good. And then we get his uh, Me and Mr. Johnson album, which is basically him just... Um, doing all these covers of Robert Johnson stuff, and it's really good, actually, to be honest, because Robert Johnson stuff, you know, it's from the 30s, it's really old now. Um, and I do love Robert Johnson, I thought he's a fantastic blues player, but, you know, some of it, you know, it sounds, you know, the quality is not there, obviously. Um, but Eric's just basically bringing them back with his vocals and just giving them better quality and better sound, so it is a fantastic album, this, really good. And then we get his sessions for Robert J., um, which is really cool as well. He just does songs he missed on the album. And I can't believe he didn't do Sweet Home Chicago. But he did it on here. So really good. And then you get a DVD of just him basically sitting there with the guitar. And this is really cool. It's a little digi pack, Which is uh, really nice. Love that picture of him. Really cool. Um, and then here we get the one which I recommend to all my viewers. Because this is such an easy going album. Nice classic rock album. I love it. Back home. Check it. It's it's like a pound on Amazon. Please check this out. This is incredible. I love this album. Um, the title track's "So Tired" is fantastic. Say what you will. I'm going left. Great revolution. George Harrison cover. Love comes to everyone's great. Um, Lost and found. One day. Uh, Run home to me. And probably my favorite actually is the title track. Back home. Beautiful acoustic song. So really cool. And then his album with the late, great J.J. Kale Again, love you, J.J. Rest in peace. He was brilliant. One of the best blues players ever. Um, actually, my probably my two favourite blues players right here together on an album. So how could you go wrong? You can't. This album is fantastic. Um, if I was to review this album, it would get a very high nine. That's how much I love this album. Just love that record. Very bluesy, though. So if you're not into the blues, I'm not going to recommend it. But it is an incredible album. Just love it. And then here we get um, the 2010 self-titled Clapton. Just brilliant. All this American Songbook stuff. Absolutely fantastic. I've heard a lot of American Songbook albums now. And this is by far my favourite. Fantastic. Just love it to bits. And then in 2013, he done this kind of reggae album. Um, called Old Sock, which I also equally love. Um, Further on down the road, uh, Gotta Get Over. He does a song with Paul McCartney, my two favourite musicians, singing together on the same record. It's like, yeah? So, all of me. So, for those Beatles fans, there's a Paul McCartney song I bet half of you haven't heard. All of me. Go listen to that. That is incredible. And then the best track on here is easily the single, Every Little Thing. Love that song. Got great music video as well. And of course, when J.J. Kale unfortunately passed in 2013, was I think it was late 2013, might have been early 2014, Eric got together with some brilliant musicians, including Mark Knopfler, John Mayer, uh, Willie Nelson, Tom Petty and Don White, and made this album here, um, The Breeze, an appreciation of J.J. Kale. And a lot of people tend to put this album down a bit, say, yeah, it's not an Eric album. Like, yeah, it's not meant to be an Eric album. It is a tribute album. And the whole point of this album was just to recapture those classic hits and remind people, like me, of J.J. Cow. Because I didn't know him too much at this point. And this album done exactly that. It was a fantastic, beautiful tribute album. So, fantastic there. And then, of course, released today. Just came out today. I got this about half an hour ago when I just filled my unboxing of it. Eric Clapton's I Still Do. What an album. Absolutely love it. Just incredible. Um, got mittens on there on the back cover because in the first month of the recording for this album, he had eczema in his hands. So that's really cool. But haven't heard it yet, but I love the single. Um, What's it called? Spiral. Yeah, love that. And um, I heard Stones in My Passway on a little kind of interview thingy done on Amazon, which was brilliant. Beautiful bluesy track there. 
and it's back with um, uh, Glyn Johns, um, producer from Slow Hand. Peter Blake doing the album artwork. I mean, this album's a winner. It really is. I can already tell. So make sure you pick it up. Brand new, just out today. Pick it up. So anyway, that is it. That is my complete Eric Clapton CD collection. I know there's a couple I'm missing. Um, like the Rainbow Concert and EC was here. <clears throat> but studio album-wise and... You know, <laughs> studio album-wise, I am all complete. And I have nearly all the other live albums and compilations. But anyway, that is it for my Eric Clapton CD collection. <clears throat> my voice is going now. I can feel it. I'm sure you guys can hear it too. Um, but anyway, I had a lot of fun filming this. As I say, when the vinyl is released, I'll be doing a vinyl video for it. But until then, make sure you go check out my video on James Arden's channel where we already basically covered it all. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, please hit the subscribe button, like the video, and leave a message. See you next time. Bye.